Hello everyone out there for the Angry Marks Radio Podcast and YouTube Networks. It's me, Cindy Saddleman, once again with Impact Implosion for January 25th, 2019. And we are out of the asylum and we are free to the southern comfort that is Mexico City, Mexico. For looks like to be four exciting weeks of action and it's going to start off hot because we are immediately thrown into a match between Rich Swan and Ahio Del Vaquingo. Now, I'm not a big follower of AAA. I used to watch it a bit, and then I burned out pretty quickly because I learned that watching it in 2011 and 2012 was a bad idea because it was mostly trash. So, I don't know any of these names, so I had to look them up, and it turns out that uh, El Hijo Del Vaquingo is is a current is one of the current uh AAA trios champions along with Laredo Kid and uh, Mr. Says Jr. As many people know, I think he he was Angelical. Um, now Mr. Says Jr. should not be conflated with the original Mr. Says, who was Sin Caro Uno and also known as the Human Botch Machine. Yes, you gotta love these wonderful things. The backstory for this match is El Hingo del Vikingo will be part of the big Impact versus AAA eight man tag that will take place in a few weeks. So it is important to note that all of these matches that you're going to see with AAA talent will be basically big for the next few weeks. And we're getting a lot of that uh, over the first hour. I will be honest, I was, if you're going to start a show off, this is the way to do it, because back and forth, it started off fast, uh, both of them playing to their strengths. Um, Vikingo wanted to keep the match quick, however, Swan knows that you can't win with speed against someone who's a match of speed, even in Vikingo, so he basically slowed it down to get the advantage with submissions among submissions among submissions. And it turns out to be the right way to do things. And one of the big things that I did see out of this match was from uh, Vikingo, where he pulled out this fisherman's jackhammer move for two. It was just an amazing match. I can't say any bad things about this match. Rich does come back, though, hits his 450 off the second rope for three, and your winner is Rich Swong. He is still your X Division champion. I don't think this was a title match, though, but either way, Rich Swan is the winner. But that brings us to the big part of Rich Swan, and what you're going to see throughout the night is Rich Swan's history with OVE founder Sammy Callahan coming into play. The backstory that we're getting from Sammy Callahan is that Sammy saved Swan a couple of years ago by sending him to Impact. Basically, he would have been homeless and broke and all that fun stuff after being released by WWE. That was the backstory. Look, I honestly don't get it at all. If this was if this is the story that they're going with, I kind of wish they would go into a different direction. You know, maybe build off some of the stuff that they had in CZW, but looking it up, they weren't competing against each other in CZW, and Swong was gone before uh, Sammy Callahan took over as Booker, I believe. So this is just a way to get them to feud. It was, it's like an Ohio versus Baltimore feud, I guess. So, as usual, Sammy brings out the shirt, but then Rich says this. It's the right size, but it's the wrong fit. And basically walks away. And so we're pretty much going to get a feud between Sammy and Rich for the X Division title. Because we have to remember, it's not about weight limits. It's about no limits. So maybe the X Division title is getting a more hardcore feel. And if that's the way you do it, why not just go with Eddie Edwards. Oh, that's right, because he is uh, partnered up with Eli Drake, and more on that later. Now, something that we didn't bring up last week is that we had Millie McKenzie 
doing the backstage interviews, Millie McKenzie decided to leave Impact Wrestling. Actually, uh, another team has left Impact Wrestling. Actually, a lot of people have left Impact over the next few days. So, we have a new interviewer in Melissa Santos, and she gets the joy of interviewing both Killer Cross and Moose. Cross decides he's going to win because he's going to be homicidal. He brings up, then Melissa brings up Brian Cage to see that he's going to be a factor in this match because he wants a shot at Johnny Impact as well because he rightfully feels that he got screwed a homecoming. And then Moose says he's tied up in customs and won't be able to make it. Yeah, that usually tells me that he had something to do with his disappearance. And then in one of the slight hilarious moments that Moose usually does for the interviewers, he gives uh, Melissa Santos the call me sign. You know, because he couldn't get with Millie McKenzie, he's going to try for Melissa Santos and get the call. You know, I'm pretty sure that he's going to come up with the next cheesy line in two weeks. Call me, Melissa. I've got cable. Yeah with the finger guns and everything. They announced uh, tonight that the Global Wrestling Network is now going to be free. Hooray! So that might be something worth downloading on my Xbox One. Um, so the seven ninety nine, which would have been the normal price, is now the premium price, so you get everything ad-free. You know what? That doesn't sound like too bad of a deal. You know, it's the tiered system that uh, the WDB network is looking into going to, um, seventy nine nine a month, seven ninety nine a month is not that bad of a price. Um, I know that they were working with a lot of indie, uh, a lot of independent groups over the past couple of years, so maybe this could be a way to get a lot of those indie shows with impact talent. And put it on the uh, Global Wrestling Network. It might work out. They might be able to put some AAA on there too. So now we get a Jordan Grace and Kira Hogan interview. And they say they're training for next week when they fight Sue Young and Allie. They bring up Melissa Santos, brings up Rosemary. And then the screen gets wonky. And there's a message in Freddy Krueger writing. Uh, makes me wish this was on... Uh, all right, now they could hype up the late night Freddy's Nightmares reruns. It says that the darkness will take you too. This is not your fight. I don't know. Jordan Grace can hold her own. I mean, if she could deal with perverts on the internet, she could definitely deal with Soo Young and Dark Alley. To her, this is probably just a cakewalk. Um, aside from having to deal with toxic masculinity that is permeated through Twitter, through dire dire need for superiority of male wrestling fans anyway our next match is kira versus taya valkyrie now i gotta make this thing they have a wrestler named kira hogan kira spelled k-e-y-r-a uh, is making a return to uh, impact wrestling she was uh on impact on the october 11 2018 edition when she wrestled Tessa Blanchard, Tessa Blanchard beat her. And she has won quite a few championships, uh, namely in the Crash. She was the Crash Women's Champion. She won the Women's Championship in AULL and Generation on 21. And she was the uh, CMML Reina International Junior Champion. Champion. And won a mask versus mask match in Luchas de Apostas. And so, yeah, we are in good hands here. And Kira knows that you can't beat Tyra Valkyrie straight up. You got to sneak attack her. And for the most part, it worked. But Tyra's power and endurance and the power of being in her hometown and having a return from injury is just too much. So, set out Powerbomb, Curb Stomp, and Taya's finishing move, instead of the, I think she used to use like a Road to Valhalla sort of thing, to play up the Valkyrie thing, but she's got uh, Kira in a leg lock camel clutch submission, and it turns out to be good enough, and she gets the win, 
and there's a huge babyface promo that she cuts uh, with Josh. But she singles out two people, Killer Cross and Tessa Blanchard. Now, Tessa Blanchard, she laughs after getting herself suspended, so expect Tessa Blanchard to come back in a couple of weeks' time for some altercation between her and Taya Valkyrie in Mexico City to set up stuff for Las Vegas. But the big thing that I'm interested in is Taya Valkyrie and Killer Cross. They are starting to set up for a potential Taya Valkyrie Killer Cross singles match, which I am kind of interested in and makes a lot of sense. Taya Valkyrie has got a good amount of power and a good amount of speed, and we're starting to see a resurgence in intergender wrestling across the board. You saw that at uh, Sunday's Royal Rumble with Nia Jax uh, basically beating up uh, our truth and getting into the Rumble and then immediately paying for it after eliminating Mustafa Ali and just basically getting uh, RKO'd by Randy Orton and thrown out. Eh, makes sense. Um, I am assuming that if they do this match, it will be in Vegas. Because I kind of still see a four-way for the title uh, at the April pay-per-view when they go back to the Rebel Complex. Melissa Santos interviews Rich Swan about his past and what Callahan said. Well, guess what? it's true so we got some truth out of Sammy Callahan but he's missing some stuff according to Rich Swan. okay uh, then we get our GWN flashback of the week which is Jack Evans versus Hector Garza I've seen this match before it is really good I would like to see Jack Evans in Impact but since Impact is kind of on the fence right now, I don't see them bringing in Jack Evans. And plus, who they got right now on their main roster seems to be pretty good with a mix of local talent that they bring in uh, for whenever they go. Like if they're in Mexico, they'll bring in people from uh, AAA and Crash. They will also be bringing in some local Vegas people, which should be interesting. So then we get a Rascals promo on basically, uh, I honestly do not get why they have to do this 70 show sort of thing. I just don't get it at all. Look, they're great talents. They're trying to make them out into stoners and stuff like that. To be honest, this didn't work at all. Oh God, I'm blanking on the name uh it was these group of stoner idiots in ring of honor you know it's like they never won a match or anything uh, look i'm blanking on the name if somebody can tell me the name leave a comment on angry marks or just tweet me directly at game show garbage um then we get a scarlet bordeaux workout promo which is all fine and all, and for some odd reason, because she needs to play up the sexuality, uh, she deep throats a banana. Well, that takes me off of her because I can't eat potassium, so um, have all the bananas that you want, Scarlet. They're just not for me. Then we get the Rascals segments where, first off, it is Dizzy Hit Squad versus Dez and Wentz of the Rascals. Now... The Desi Hit Squad does it right because they need to overpower uh, Desi Wentz the Rascals because there's no way you're going to match them up on speed. It looks like they got a... I kind of like what they're going with Impact. They got a lot of speed guys going, so maybe they're taking it back to the, Im the Impact X Division days of like uh, 03 to 07, which would be nice. It would give them a little bit of an identity. An old identity, but it's an identity that they had on their own, nevertheless. They... Could not match up to Dez and Wentz's speed because you got a lot of knee strikes in the beginning of the match. Dez busts loose against Singh and Rahu. Wentz then tags in and gets a lot of good offenses until Rahu gets the advantage with a low, with some double team attacks with him and Singh. And that's basically all they do until Wentz reverses one and takes out both members. Rahu is a little rattled and Leaves him enough time to hot tag Dez. 
and then you get spectacular moves all around with a springboard plancha to the outside, and then you get the push moonsault for the three. Dezen went to the Rascals. They win again. I got to think they're going to be in line for an impact tag title shot coming uh, either March or April. And I could possibly see that maybe you got a three-way going on with the Rascals, the Lucha Bros, and LAX uh, at the Rebel Complex in April. So that should be a good match. Now, Impact cuts a promo saying that in a serious tone he'll avenge Taya and isn't worried about Cross or Moose. And especially not Brian Cage, who's still under the guise of not being there. Look, I don't know what it is, but Impact just sounded bored during this promo. It's like, uh, yeah, I will avenge against Cross. I will defend my X Division or Impact World Championship against him. It just seems like he's nonplussed about it. I mean, you're the champion. You're in a blood feud. Cross just injured your wife. You know, you're supposed to get angry. I mean, this is a blood feud, and he sure ain't like he's another feud. Another feud, like he's back in 2011, like he's feuding with the remnants of uh, whoever was Team Johnny. You remember back then when he was part of a walkout and John Laurinaitis, you know, that sort of thing. It was just, uh Then we get an LAX promo, and Ortiz rightfully gets bollocked for what he did last week by calling out the Lucha Bros and saying if they want another ass-kicking, you know where to find it. Basically, what Conan is saying, you're basically giving them a tag title shot when they don't deserve it. And Conan is right on that. Ortiz opened his flap, and I think they're going to pay for that. And then we get Ethan Page versus Trey of the Rascals. Now the match does start in progress. I'm assuming that if you're watching it on the Twitch feed, it would not be in progress. That you actually got the entire thing. Basically, Ethan Page was in control for 90% of the match. He nullified Trey's speed better than I've seen anybody nullify any of the Rascals' speed. Um, doing everything right, but Ethan was all ego, as it were, and kind of went full ego and let it slip. Trey was able to stun Ethan with a few kicks, a couple of 619s, and then his Red to Dead finisher, which is basically Crossroads or Roll of the Dice for three, and the Rascals go two for two. Looks like Trey is gunning for an X Division title shot. Des and Wentz are gunning for a tag title shot, and I like it. I mean, you have a stable of guys who are young, they're exciting, and they know to split up, and if all three of them go after one belt, that causes problems. So with Des and Wentz uh, tunnel focusing for the tag titles, Trey tunnel focusing for that X Division title, I mean, I could potentially see all three of them with gold at one point in this year, with Des and Wentz getting the tag titles, Trey getting the X Division title. Um, whether he'll win that from Rich Swan or Sammy Callahan, uh, that remains to be seen. Then we got a promo from Eli Drake and Eddie Edwards. Okay. Eli wants to bring out the old Eddie Edwards, you know, the American Wolves underdog Eddie Edwards you know, who was all about wrestling. Eddie doesn't want to go back to that. So when Eli mentions that they're part of this eight-man tag against a bunch of stars from AAA, he offers up a tag match next week against the Rascals. Okay, makes sense to me. And I guess... I don't know. I just don't think these things work at all. I mean, we've seen these before, and it doesn't quite pan out like we want them to. And then we get the, your main event, Johnny Impact versus Killer Cross for the Impact title. Now, I take notes while watching the match, and I am going to read what I have written down on this. 
Impact starts by taking control and doing his parkour stuff. Cross takes advantage by distracting the ref, having Moose at Impact by taking him out with distractions. He's too dis Impact is too distracted from the. <laughs> Oh, Brian Cage interferes, cause no contest. This match bored me. It put me to sleep. And that is a bad way to go about any blood feud, is that if it puts you to sleep, then it's not a blood feud worth fighting for. Okay. Um... Aside from that, I enjoyed this week's uh, Impact. I mean, hopefully we're going to get more development between uh, the Rascals for their potential title push. Looks like we're possibly going to get a title match in Mexico City between uh, LAX versus the Lucha Bros. I am interested in seeing where this Eli versus uh, Eddie Edwards thing goes. <sighs> I want this Impact Cross feud to end. And I'm willing to see where everything is going to go between Taya Valkyrie and Tessa Blanchard. So that's going to do it for me. That has been Impact Implosion. I am Cindy Seidelman. We will see you next week. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, follow Angry Marks, follow me at Game Show Garbage. I will see you next time. Until then, bye-bye.